Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Dan Dan the Art Man's Book Reviews, Episode 47, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Frank Baum. I think the best word to sum up this novel and its narration is delightful. Anne Hathaway's narration was incredibly fun to listen to. Okay, so you can tell that I read this book via the audiobook narrated by Anne Hathaway. She did a great job, but we'll talk about that later in this review. Now let's get back to that review. You can tell she had a blast narrating it and getting into different characters. I'm turning 31 this month, and I loved it. This review was posted on January 9th, 2014. I'm now 33, and it is August 19th, 2016, as I record this. I will always be a kid at heart. I know my kids will love it, too. I can't recommend the audiobook version enough. The story was surprisingly great as well. Wonderfully written, and never a dull moment. For as old as the novel is, it reads great today and holds up very well. I could especially see children really enjoying this book. I would easily call this book timeless for that reason. As I've studied story structure, I always try to find it in the books I read and the movies and TV shows I watch. I was surprised at the well-constructed structure in this classic story. Maybe it's because it's old, And maybe it's because I was sort of expecting it to be something like Alice in Wonderland, but this was a very well-laid-out story. One great simple way to look at stories that I gleaned from listening to the editorial director of Pyre Books, Lou Anders, in an episode of the Writing Excuses podcast, is this. Act 1. Orphan. So the three-act structure, Act 1 is roughly the first 25% of a story. Act 2 is the next 50%, and then Act 3 is the last 25% of the story. So I divide Act 2 up because there's the midpoint between them. So the first half of Act 2 I call Act 2A, and the second half I call Act 2B. Let's go over that again. Act 1, Orphan. Act 2A, Wanderer. Act 2B, Warrior. Act 3, Martyr. So think of the story as four parts equal in length. Okay, so let me plug this story into this simple story structure tool. Act 1, Orphan. Dorothy is a young orphaned girl raised by her Uncle Henry and Aunt Em in the bleak landscape of a Kansas farm. Act 2A, Wanderer. In order to return to Kansas, the Good Witch of the North tells Dorothy that she will have to go to the Emerald City and ask the Wizard of Oz to help her. Act 2b, Warrior. The wizard agrees to help each of them, but only if one of them kills the Wicked Witch of the West who rules over the western Winky Country. As the friends travel across the Winky Country, the Wicked Witch sees them coming and attempts various ways of killing them. First, she sends her forty great wolves to kill them. The Tin Woodman manages to kill them all. Then the Wicked Witch of the West sends her forty crows to peck their eyes out. The Scarecrow manages to kill them by grabbing them and breaking their necks. Yeah, a little more intense than the um, children's version of the movie I saw growing up. But all the all the same, awesome, and still, it was written in a way that I don't think it was too violent or dark for children even though that does sound pretty dark as I read this. (laughs) Then the Wicked Witch of the West summons a swarm of black bees to sting them to death. Using the Scarecrow's extra straw, the others hide underneath it, while the bees try to sting the Tin Woodman. Then the Wicked Witch of the West uses her winky soldiers to attack them, and they are scared off by the cowardly lion. Act 3. Martyr I'm sure you know, but if you don't, A martyr is someone who would sacrifice or sacrifice even their life uh, to serve other people or to save other people. 
Act 3, Martyr. This one is a bit harder. I guess I would say that she risks herself to feed the lion when the two are trapped in the Wicked Witch's castle. Cool. Another story structure part of this book that caught my eye was the midpoint. In the middle, your characters should move from reaction, wanderer, to action, warrior. This usually involves the characters sitting down and hashing out a plan, like the Council of Elrond in The Lord of the Rings. It's also a false victory in many cases. You think you've solved the problem only to find a bigger problem. After they finally make it to see the great and terrible wizard, Oz, he tells them he will not help them until they kill the Wicked Witch of the West. They sit and talk about how surely they cannot do this, but over the course of the talk they decide that they must or they will never get what they want. So if you're trying to uh, study story structure, check out The Wizard of Oz. It follows it really well. Or pretty much any movie, because they all follow the structure as well. The prose was well written in this book, and I just loved the interesting characters. The little people made out of China was not something I remembered from the movie, and that was cool. It may not be in the movie. We used to watch the movie as kids at my grandparents' a lot. Have you read this novel? Did you love it as much as I did? Do you have kids? I recommend reading it to them or getting the audiobook narrated by Anne Hathaway. Do you know there are a ton of sequels? The new movie looked kind of cool, but I heard it was pretty bad. Have you seen it? Is it worth watching? Sound off in the comments, and thanks for stopping by. Cool. So... Uh, I kept mentioning the audiobook. It was fantastic. I think it had just come out, and that's why I got it. Uh, I'm an Audible member, and uh, Audible sponsors this podcast, so let me tell you this awesome, exciting news. They want to give you a free audiobook just for checking out their service. If you go to audibletrial.com slash Reviews, you can get a free audiobook, any book of your choice, but I recommend The Wizard of Oz written by Frank Baum, narrated by Anne Hathaway. She does all kinds of different character voices for all the different characters in the book, and it is a delight to listen to. She did a great job. It's really fun. Yeah, so check it out, and I think that if you choose that audiobook, you'll really enjoy it. But audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews will get you any audiobook of your choice. You get one free and you get a free 30-day trial of Audible's service. So check that out and if you do, it supports the show. So thank you. Cool. Well, I don't have much else to say. That was a long review. Um, I, th I think I kind of reviewed it by plugging it into a story structure tool. <laughs> But I'm sure a lot of writers listen to this, so there you go. And uh, story structure is just interesting. If you learn it, you can start to see it in almost every movie you go see. So it's really fun to be like, whoa, this is the moment where they've finished introducing the story and introduced the problem, and all of a sudden, the character's world has just been flipped upside down, and now they're a wanderer. Cool, we just moved from Act 1 to Act 2. Then they stop reacting and make a plan to start fighting back. Whoa, we must be in the middle of the movie. This is the midpoint. Then there's the all is lost moment, like in Toy Story 3, where they're all just going down that belt towards the furnace, and for sure they're all going to die. And then all of a sudden, Act 3 has the victory, and then that's the conclusion. So anyway, check it out. I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, this episode was a little different. I don't really have much else to add. Usually I just kind of chat about stuff I remembered about the book, but I'm just going to try and keep this one about the same length as other episodes. So that's all I've got for you guys this week. Hope you guys are having a great summer of reading as this summer is closing out. And I will talk to you next week. Oh, also, last time I accidentally uh, forgot to trim back the end, the music and the outro. So I said, Mike, take it away. And then... Mike didn't take it away for like a minute and a half, but that wasn't Mike's fault. That was my editing mistake. So anyway, the last episode, <laughs> there's just like a minute and a half of music, and then Mike talks. But this time, we're going to hear him next. So, Mike, thanks buddy, and take it away.
This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works license. Music by Kevin McLeod, found at Incompetech.com. The website that goes with this podcast can be found at dandantheartman.com. And you can follow Dan on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at dandantheartman. For Dan, this is Mike Luoma, saying happy reading, and we'll see you next time.